Hola a todos. ¿Cómo están? Hello everyone. En la clase de hoy vamos a estudiar los verbos. En today's class we are going to study Spanish verbs. The word return here is a verb. Flows is a verb. Goes is a verb. Returns again is a verb. Is pushed is a verb. Allow is a verb. Separates is a verb. So we are going to study Spanish verbs today. We have studied los artículos, los sustantivos, los adjetivos, los pronombres y Hoy vamos a estudiar los verbos. These five are the variable, variable part of speech. So estos cinco son la parte variable de la oración española. Ok. La parte variable de la oración española. They are the five variable part of speech of a Spanish sentence. The other four are the invariable one. So these don't take any, don't go through any grammatical modification ever. But these, these five do. So that's why they are variable part of speech. And these are the non-variable or invariable part of speech. So Verbs will be the last one of this first group. But this, I mean, you can spend the whole semester studying verbs only. So this can only be an introduction. It will give you an overview. And the basic you'll get here uh, will set you on a track to learn more. You'll have the basic, you'll have the different type of verbs and the different grammatical modifications they go through. And you'll have some examples. And also when we will be studying content-based tests later, we'll allude to them. And that will give you uh, a background to build on in the future. Well, just take a few moments to read the test on the screen. Well, let's use the verb to walk to go and to be to illustrate uh, the difference between a regular and an irregular verb. So Spanish, uh, some of the Spanish verbs are regular, other are irregular. Just like in English, you have regular verb and uh, irregular verbs, but let's use uh, the word, the verb to walk, to go, and to be, just to explain the concept of regularity. Okay, so here you have he walks, he walked, which is a simple past tense, and this is a present tense. 
walking, which is, which is a present participle. He is walking, present progressive, walked, past participle. He has walked, present perfect. Compare that to he goes, and in the past, he goes become he went. To be third person singular is he is. Third person singular of the simple past tense is he was. He is is completely different from to be. If you look at be here and is, you don't see any similarity between them. Same thing with he was. But that behavior is not the same we observe here when it comes to walk. Walk remains the same throughout and we just add the endings. But go to go is not the same. In the present you add yes, that looks like still regular, but when you, co you come to the pass of to go, it becomes he went, completely different. No spelling similarity. To be, he is, and he was. So, when the initial part of the verb remains the same throughout a conjugation, it's called a regular verb. And when that initial part is modified, is changed and dramatically changed in the uh, in the case of to be and to go they are called irregular verbs so the same concept exists in uh, in spanish where there are regular verbs and irregular verbs now this one is called root in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in English, in Spanish, is called rice, okay, la rice. But in uh, Spanish language studies, this part of the verb is known as the stem. That's why uh, 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 regular verbs keep the stem the same and irregular verbs change the stem of the verb. So the modifications that the verb goes through, like third person singular is S, simple past is ED, present participle is ING, and uh, progressive, present progressive is ING, and this is past participle, and present Perfect also has uh, it to use the past participle plus the auxiliary. So the auxiliary, and then you add the main verb plus the past part, uh, the the ed that denote past participle. So all those different endings that you have here, they are referred to in Spanish as accidente grammaticalis. Okay, accidente grammaticalis. And they are not the only type of accidente grammaticale. There are these are these have these have to do with the conjugated form, but the verb itself has other accidentes. The verb could be uh, in the past or present, so that's a tense. It could be in the mood or uh, indicative or subjunctive. That's the that's called modo. It could be a, a, an active voice or a passive voice that's referred to as vox. And if it's a first person, second person, third person, that is referred to as a persona. And if it's singular or plural, that's referred to as number. So, 
verbs has more grammatical modifications than the other part of speech. Okay? Article, nouns, and adjectives, they only have gender and number, which are known in Spanish as genero y numero. Pronoun add person to it because you have a yo form, a tu form, ella, el, ella, usted form, which are third person, first person, second person, and third person. All those are a, a, a category of accidente grammaticalis called persona. Okay, so pronoun has that. The verb has persona, it has number, it has a tempo, it has modo, it has voice, which is voice, active voice, when uh, the subject is the one realizing the action, and uh, passive voice, when the subject is receiving the action. Okay, so it has five. There is another one, but it's not common, it's not uh, when uh, uh, there is a sense of completion. Uh, like the action is completed, it's also known as a as another accidente grammat accidente grammatical known as aspecto. You have continue here, for instance, you have present progressive, so that means the action of walking is going on. So that's an aspect of a verb. It's known as uh, aspecto. But he has walked. He has walked, for instance, has some present and some past in it. It means something has started in the past and still con is going on. Okay? It's not completely cut off. But if, I, if we say he had walked, that action is completed. So that's another aspect of verb known as aspecto. But is, uh, the other five are more common and more widespread and, and uh, less ambiguous okay so verb has uh, quite a few accidental grammaticalis and it does have more than the other part of speech okay so regular verbs and irregular verb the fact that some verb change their stem make them irregular okay when they keep the stem the, the main part of the verb and just take on the endings they are regular but when the stem goes through some modification they are known as irregular okay now besides the irregularity there are three types of conjugation in spanish and those conjugations have to do with the endings of the verb. Los verbos de la primera conjugación terminan con a a. So the first group of verbs end in a r. Okay? AR. So in Spanish you have AR verb, ER verb, and IR verbs. All verbs in Spanish end with one of these three. So there are three forms of verbal conjugations in Spanish as a result. Okay? La primera conjugación. La segunda conjugación y la tercera conjugación. Ok. So, for any of them, how you conjugate a verb is in, a, in an SVO structure, subject, verb, object structure, you have the subject, you add the verb, especially the verb stem, 
which is the root, meaning the verb without the infinitive AR, ER, or IR, and then you add the appropriate ending. Okay? If we take the, the verb toma, for instance, and we, we want to conjugate it at the first person, at the present tense, We'll take Toma, we'll remove the AR, and we will add the appropriate ending. Okay? So, the appropriate ending of a regular verbs that end in AR will be O for the U form. The U form is the first person singular, as we have seen uh, when we were studying pronouns O oh, and you see O oh here O oh, anytime you hear O oh, the first thing you think about is first person singular okay now in the past tense you'll hear O oh for the third person singular but if the tense and everything is current, then is the first person singular. If I say you hablo, you hablo, you know it's the first person singular. Okay. Now, if it's verb ending in AR, the two form, which is the second form, second person singular is AS, AS in English, which is AS or ASA in Spanish, ASA in Spanish. So if I, if I, if, if, it, if, if we're using the verb tomar, if I say yo tomo, your turn will be tu tomas, el toma, nosotros tomamos, vosotros tomáis, ellos, ellan, Ustedes toman. ER verb is still O at the first person singular, but instead of ASA, we have ASA, which is ES. So it changes here. The good thing about the present tense of regular verbs is the ER and IR verbs take, take on the same ending. Okay? The ending you see here is almost the, the same here for the first, second, and third person is the same. For the third person plural is the same. It's only the nous, the nosotros, and the vosotros form that are different between the verb ending with ir and the verb ending with er. But the vosotros is not much used in the US or Latin America. So if you are not in Spain, you can forget about this one, okay? And just think of the nosotros and the ellos, ellas, ustedes for the plural part of the verb, of the conjugation. So you have uh, the yo form, you have the ella, the el, ella, usted form because the two is not common unless you are talking to a child if you are in a pediatric or care business you talk a lot to children and if you are in a regular clinic where most adults visit unless they are visiting with their children and you are taking care of the children the two form you might as well forget it and 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 just use who state because you state is formal it's also polite so if you are talking, you use O, first person singular. You are talking to one patient, then you know that the verb you are using, if it's a regular verb, it will be R for AR verbs, it will be E and E for ER and IR verbs. Okay? And then the nosotros is amos, emos, imos, and the third person plural is an for AR verb, EN for ER and IR verbs. Okay, so we'll see some example of verb 
And uh, as I say, if you have already taken some basic Spanish grammar before, and uh, you can take notes, and you, you <clears throat> may want to mute it sometime and take note, you can de decrease the speed and take note, review your note, and summarize to yourself. That's how you'll be building your linguistics skills. So let's look at these uh, regular verbs here. Tomar, comer, bibi. Okay. Regular verb in the sense that the root is going to remain the same throughout. Tomar, you take the AR off, you have tom everywhere. Tom, 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 tom. Come, 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 come. Bibi, bib, 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 bib. So you just add the ending that we, we just saw uh, on the previous slide. So yo tomo, tu tomas. El, ella, usted toma, nosotros tomamos, vosotros tomáis, ellos, ellas, ustedes toman. Here you have como, comes, come, comemos, comes, comen. Same thing except uh, for I have verb, you have vivimos, it ends in imos, and vivis, which is a little different from comes, and viven. So viven is the same. So just a little bit of change between these two at the third at the first and second person plural. All the other four tense four persons are the same. Okay. Well, let's look at uh, some irregular present tense here. All Spanish verbs end in AR or ER or IR. So there are three main conjugations known as primera conjugación, segunda conjugación, y tercera conjugación. Okay? But these are irregular verbs, so the stem, you'll see the stem change, okay? For estar, okay, uh, it kind of remain, but the, the ending, you see how the ending behaves. You don't just add O to it to have esto, no, you have estoy, okay? Though the, the stem remains the same, the ending shows that there is a variation between the way the endings are supposed to be in a regular AR verbs. So you have uh, yo estoy, tu estás, el está, nosotros estamos, vosotros estáis, ellos, ellan, ellos, ellas, ustedes, Están. Okay. So you have here yo, yo estoy. Now for the verb say, you have yo soy, tu eres, all this es, nosotros somos, vosotros sois, ellos son. Haber, which is to have. Okay. This is to be, say is to be, and esta also is to be because there are two types of to be in Spanish, esta and say. And this denote a permanent conditions and this denote a temporary conditions, but they both are to be. And when you are forming a uh, present progressive, you use the verb estar, 
because it's temporary. Okay, when something is a permanent, you use say. Okay, so later uh, we can we may cover that, or in the future you will come across uh, resources that will be detailed on the use of star and uh, say. Okay, Haber, you use Haber to form a lot of uh, compound tenses. Like present perfect, you use Haber. Past perfect, you use Haber, all those. So it's useful to know it's an auxiliary. Uh, Haber and say and star, they are helping verb. They are kind of auxiliary that you use to form other tenses, especially compound tenses. So they are good to know for their own uh, use uh, in isolation, but it's also good to know them as auxiliary verbs when you are in, a, in a, an environment where a compound tense is necessary. Okay, so he, has, ha, hemos, uh, abes, an. Okay, again is a, the h is mute, so is a, as, a, emos, a base, an. Okay. Kere is to want, to desire. So, quiero, yo quiero, tu quieres, el, ella, usted, quieres. Okay, or quiere. Nosotros queremos, vosotros queréis, is supposed to be queréis, and, uh, and ellos, ellas, quieren. Tener, yo tengo, okay, it's not yo tengo, that's one of the reasons it, uh, it's a, an irregular verb. If you just add O, it will be if you just drop the E-I and add O, it will be kind of a regular pattern. It will be tenu, but it doesn't work. So it's yo tengo. Tu tienes. El, ella, usted tiene. Nosotros tenemos. Vosotros tenéis. Ellos, ellas tienen. So it's good to learn them. They are irregular and they are very useful. And you use many of them as auxiliary to form other tenses, other compound tenses. The verb E is very useful. It's to go. Boy, bas, ba, vamos, bais, ban. Yo boy, tu bas, ella ba, nosotros vamos, vosotros bais, ella, ellas, uh, ellos, ellas, ustedes ban. But beside knowing the present tense, of ear uh, for its own sake is also kind of a helping verb in a way that you use it to form a near future. The same way you say I'm going to, uh, I'm going to shop, or uh, I'm going to study, and to denote a near future, something you are going to do in the very near future, that's the same way you can use Voy a la limpia, voy a limpia mi carro, like I'm going to wash my car, okay? Voy a, eh, voy a lavar eh, las ropas, I'm going to wash my clothes, okay? Boy a estudiar, so you just say boy a, and you add the main verb. Same way you say I'm going to, and you add the main verb. That's also so this this e conjugated as boy bas ba vamos bais and ban. It's used to form a near future tense. Okay, uh, the future tense we'll see later. It, you, it's not hard to form. It's the whole infinitive, and you just add the endings to it, the appropriate endings to it. But short of that, it's very common to use boy a, especially in a spoken 
language in a spoken environment where you are talking, it's very common to use boy a and a bas a, ba a, bamos a, and you add the main verb, the, the main, the lexical verb, the verb that's showing the action. Okay? If you are going to buy something, uh, bamos a comprar. So the main verb there is comprar. The bamos is just helping. But it's very good to know. It's a useful verb to know. So these are this is this, these are uh, irregular verb of cis useful verb. The present tense of cis very useful irregular verbs. It's good to know them. Now present progressive, you use the the verb estar. Present means estar has to be conjugated. In the present tense, and we see we saw it earlier. It's estoy, estás, está, estamos, estáis, están. Okay, this is yo estoy, tú, estás, él está, which is third person singular. Nosotros estamos, first person plural. Vosotros estáis, second person plural. Ellos, ellas, ustedes están third person plural okay in uh, Spanish it's very common to omit the subject okay if I say no hablo italiano that means I don't speak Italian I did not use the yo, for yo but you can understand why because the ending of the verb already shows you who is making the action who is doing the thing that's being done okay who is the subject okay so it but if there is a confusion if you are talking about somebody and the situation the, the environment is not clear for the your audience to know who you are talking about it's better to use the subject. It's better not to omit the subject. But when it's clear, it, there's no need. Okay? So you'll hear a lot of people, or oh, hablo espanol, or no hablo inglés, with, uh, without at all using the subject, but still it, uh, it's uh, understood by most people who speak Spanish. So to form the progressive tense, you use the verb estar, okay? Now, the estar is the auxiliary part of the, of the structure, but the verb itself, the verb doing the thing, the action verbs, the lexical verb, the verb that's saying what is being done, how do you add that verb to a star to form a progressive tense? In this context, we are talking about present progressive, which means the a star has to be present tense. Then you add the, the stem of the verb. After the stem, you add ando, which is A-N-D-O, or in Spanish, A-N-D-O. You add that to the stem, and then you have your conjugated form of a star, a star and the two, the, the three uh, items in two items separate because the star has to be separate from the verb and the, the ending of the verb. That will make it your pro present progressive. If it's a past progressive, simple past progressive, you will have a star conjugated in the simple past tense. If it's a future progressive, you will have a star conjugated in the simple future tense. Okay? So the other one, the other part, the past participle does not change. It just follows it. it you just 
use the main, you use the a star conjugation, and then you add the past participle. If the verb is not AR and it ends in ER or IR, the past participle is different. I mean, we're talking about present participle here. So the present participle is different. It's ando for AR verbs and endo for ER and IR verbs. So we have some example here. We have uh, estoy, which is uh, the verb estar in the first person singular. But you have all six forms here, estoy, estas, esta, estamos, esta, estan. If the verb, this verb is tomar, it's a, an AR verb, it's the first conjugation verb. What do we do here? We have our, uh, a star and then we have we add the the present participle okay you have uh, estamos and you have tomando okay estamos tomando and estamos also means nosotros estamos tomando okay it could be we are eating it could also be we are drinking because tomar means both uh, uh, to take, to eat, to drink. Okay. Comer. Comer is to eat. So but it's an ER verb. So you'll have están comiendo or whatever subject you choose the corresponding verb and then you add the present participle. So, están comiendo pan. They are eating bread. Okay, if the verb is the uh, IR verb, the present participle is still going to have the same ending in here. In. Okay, so you have estás viviendo tu vida. You are living your life. Okay. So those are examples of present progressive and uh, present perfect. Here, you use the past participle and you use the verb haber, haber, which is to have. And a present perfect in uh, in uh, in uh, in English also is uh, conjugated with the verb to have plus the past participle. If uh, you say he has eaten. He has eaten is uh, ha comido in Spanish. So here, here are the different forms of the verb to have in the present tense. You add uh, the root of the verb, and this is the root of the verb. Tom. Tom is the root of the verb. You add it. To, and then you you add uh, uh, the ending the appropriate ending because I R verb E R verb and I R verb will be ido and A R verb will be ado and when you see ado you know it's past participle uh, and when you see ando as we saw before, is present participle. When you see ido, you know it's past participle of the verb er, the verbs ending in er or ir. And when you see endo, you know it's the present participle. So the, the this one are used to form the perfect tenses. And the other one, the endo and the ando, is used to form the progressive tenses. Okay? So you can mute, take note of these uh, have and also the example that we have here. So. So we have some example here of uh, uh, 
okay this is the present tense but we are we're going to to study simple pass or preterite but for regular verbs let's compare this verb here because they are the same and one could be used as a model for the other toma and ama are all first conjugation verbs they are all they are both regular verb they don't change uh, uh, the the root or stem does not change the root or stem does not change you add uh, the ending the appropriate ending o o o all the way and uh, second person when it's a verb ending in ar you have as or as when is a verb ending in er you have es and that's the same with the verb ending with ir but when it comes to uh, third first person singular plural and second person plural or uh, the er verb and the ir verb differ a little bit you can see here we have a uh, tememos but here we have vivimos so it's emos for ir verb and emos for the er verb so you can mute take note of this six verb to ma ama come teme bibi and party and review them later summarize and when you see them you will uh, you will recognize them and uh, you can also use them as modal verb for regular verbs that has the same pattern okay so so we just compare the present tense over there and here is the preterite or past simple past of this verb if you learn to conjugate ama in the simple past at the same time you are learning to conjugate toma okay tome teme same as come party same as bb okay so here is ame which means yo ame tu amaste el amo nosotros amamos vosotros amastes ellos amaron so you have the root is the same you just add the ending to the root same for toma here you have temi temiste temio temimos temistes temieron and then you have the same thing for comer party partiste partio partimos partistes partieron and you have the same thing for vv so knowing one of these verb is knowing the other so you can use either of them for as a model of the other now future and conditional as i was saying earlier it's so easy to form a future tense for the construction of the future and conditional tenses you do not drop the ar or er or ir before adding something to the root of the verb what you do you keep the whole verb and then you just add the appropriate ending 
which means for the first person singular you add a the next you add as a amos ace and an okay with the with uh, the accent on the appropriate vowel for the conditional you add er eas er yamos yais ian so you don't take the you don't drop the infinitive or endings and then add the conjugated endings to the root no you keep the verb in its totality you keep the infinitive form of the verbs and then you add the appropriate ending so those are that makes the conjugation of the present tense of or the of the conjugation of the future and conditional tenses easy because you're not going to modify the infinitive before adding the ending for all other tenses you drop the infinitive ar er or ir first before you continue ir the verb e to go is an exception because the e itself is already like an infinitive so that one is completely different but for all the rest uh, all you do is to keep the, the totality of the verb now for the future and the conditional even the verb here remains the same you don't change it before adding the ending okay so future and conditional tenses are the easiest tenses to construct in spanish so now if you don't if uh, you want to use the if sometimes it's just easier to use the alternative to the future tense so instead of uh, conjugating the verb tomar and having tomare or uh, tomar uh, tomaras and all that you just have boy a tomar bas a comer bai a bibir vamos a amar bais a temer and ban a party okay you use the verb ir uh, con its conjugation in the first in conjugation in the present tense and you just add a to it and you add the lexical or the main verb of what you are going to do you add to it that makes the construction of future very easy also it's an alternative and as long as you know how to conjugate the verb e you can talk in the future okay so you have two different tools to conjugate the future tense okay any verb you can make it future tense either way you like Well, the subjunctive tense is not very common in uh, in Spanish, but it does exist. And also, uh, when you are giving order, you are in a hospital giving advice to people, you're going to use the command, you're going to use the formal command, and you are also going to use the negative command. So, especially for the negative command, you will need to know the present tense of subjunctive. Because the negative command does not exist in Spanish itself, but the concept is there. And so, to fulfill the concept, you resort to the present tense of subjunctive. So, we'll go into more details about that. But here is the way you form subjunctive. You take the first person of singular of present tense of the mode indicative and you drop the O. So before present indicative tense was Yotomo, Yoamo, 
yo como, yo temo, yo vivo, yo pato. You drop the O and you are left with the root. Tom, am, com, tem, bib, pato. Pat, not pato. So you have them here. Then you add the appropriate endings, and which is the appropriate ending of subjunctives. Uh, there is something they call you add the opposite ending. And what does that mean? In the present tense, the AR verbs, you add O. To ER verb also you add O. To IR verb also you add O. But from the second person, what happens is for the AR verb, you add AS in English, which is RS in Spanish. And for the ER and IR verb, you add ES in English, which is AS in Spanish. So you add S. So when it comes to the subjunctive, what you do is you revert. So instead of adding O here for the to AR verb, you add what you you're supposed to add for the second person of the ER and IR. Okay, you will know this ES and A and all those were noticed when we were conjugating uh, Toma in the present tense. No, not Toma, Come and Bibi in the present tense. Now we are using the opposite, opposite in the sense that we are use, using what we, we were supposed to use in the present for the other conjugation er and ir the second and third conjugation endings those are the one we use for the first conjugation ending because er is the first conjugation la primera conjugación and er and ir are la segunda conjugación y la tercera conjugación but for the subjunctive the way it goes is you use the ER and IR ending, okay, for the AR verbs. And then you take the AR verbs ending and you use it for the ER. You see? The comer and now coma, temer, tema, bibi, viva, pati, pata. Okay? So you drop the O first to start with. And so all the rest I'm talking about has to do with uh, the, from the second person on. So here you have ES, AR verb takes on E, E, ES, E, Amos, Ace, N. And ER and IR verb takes on A, A, S, A, A, Amos, Ice, N. So that's why they call it you revert. Okay, what is supposed to be for the first conjugation verbs goes to the second and third conjugation verbs, and what's supposed to be for the second and third conjugation verbs come to the first conjugation verb. And again, first conjugation verbs in Spanish is AR verbs, second conjugation verbs is ER verb, and third conjugation verbs is IR verbs okay so this is that's how the subjunctive behaves it's good to know it because when you are making negative comment you will have to resort to the present subjunctive to fulfill your intent so uh, it's not stuff that are easy to grab in one sitting so you can mute take note or come back to it review and as we are studying tests if any of those patterns occur i will allude to it and then after the course just like i said before after you complete this course 
get yourself fully immersed first into vital sign measurement practice and, op and speaking opportunities and train your ears in, 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 in improve your auditory capabilities and as those linguistic skills are developed at some point if you want to study something else if you want to convert other micro skills in the medical field you can tackle it the procedure the techniques that we are going to use in uh, module 3 and 4 you can transfer those techniques to other field so it's not that you are going to limit yourself to vital sign measurement but vital sign measurement is just going to be a contest that you will use to acquire the linguistic skills you need to become bilingual okay so after this course and with a, a with a few weeks practice you will become bilingual in the field of vital sign measurement but you can expand the scope later and use the same technique the same linguistic approaches to learn another skill or to convert another skill that you have in english but you want to convert it in spanish if you are a nurse oncologist after this training you can do a lot of reading about cancer and all that if you are cardiologist you can read public uh, communication material public health material about you know the heart uh, blood vessels cardiac cycle cardiac uh, heart disease and how to prevent them all those will train you in the field of cardiology and uh, but the linguistic skill you have acquired in this course will help you but you will have to work on the lexicon the vocabulary you build the vocabulary you read a lot in that field and you start looking for uh, you know whom to discuss those items with in Spanish because until you 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 start communicating orally or uh, discussing those matters you cannot master them okay reading it will not be a loan it will be a bookish knowledge but it will not be activated it will be activated only when you are talking to people in real life about those issues well as i was saying before uh, when you have a, in a situation where you have to give advice you have to or request something you you resort to command or also known as imperative okay so for the six verb that we have studied earlier toma ama comer teme bibi party these are the informal command okay obviously you don't use yo in the command because you are not giving order to yourself okay unless you are you know i don't know in what circumstances uh, uh you can exhort yourself maybe you wake up uh, and you are facing something and you look into the mirror and say okay i have to study spanish i have to become bilingual okay so that's different but in normal circumstances people give advice to others they give orders to others they make a petition to others so 
when you are when you are in an informal environment you say tutoma so the subject usually is not used in a, in imperative so you can say toma ama come teme bibe pate so it's it's understood that uh, the subject is kind of omitted and if you are talking to somebody and you say do this the person know you are talking to him or her okay in the formal or courtesy which is also politeness circumstance circumstances is the usted form that you use and the usted form for toma will be the subjunctive that we were talking about okay so you have tome ame coma tema biba pata the nosotros if you are exalting yourself yourself meaning you belong to a group where you are exalting yourself you are going to do something and you are deciding together then that command or imperative can apply to the plural the first person plural and those verb will be tomemos amemos comamos temamos bibamos and patamos and verb that you can model after these will behave the same way so you can mute it take note review your note and these are not things that you memorize and master these are things that you only master through practice everybody who has learned a language know that when you learn rules and all this and you don't practice you forget even when you are practicing not all grammatical points lend themselves to daily practices so we all forget things that's why the books stay there we go back to it that's why people have reference books even physicians have reference or death reference or you know that they consult it's not that uh, they have not studied it but you study it doesn't stay there all the time you know especially you know you study a lot of things and you find yourself in a very small angle of practice and it's hard to you know remember i mean if we can't remember everything we won't be human beings any longer so take note review summarize to yourself and uh, look for speaking opportunity practicing opportunities interacting with a friend or a co-worker and uh, build the skills that way so it's not easy to study verbs verbs are it has a lot of stuff that you can spend a whole semester covering and uh, if you are not practicing you may spend one year uh, studying it you will forget 75 percent of it if you don't practice now when you start you find yourself in an environment you will come back part of it will come back but for you to get the precision and to be sharp you have to reschool yourself sometime so practice is the only way for you to keep your knowledge you know um, alive well um we'll we'll uh, illustrate will identify verbs in in the first portion and then you you'll do the other portion as your homework okay as usual we'll go to a larger um, you know slide of this portion and see what verbs we have here in uh, in the test okay so this is a verb check-in which is to check uh, evaluate la pression arterial i mean uh, measure you can say measure and this is 
a verb also to evaluate and these are imperative tenses that's why they have this en en they were supposed to be checking and evaluating if they were uh, regular present tenses but since they are imperatives and command they they are using the opposite ending so they were supposed to end in on if it were indicative if it were a present tense but they are using the subjunctive so that's why you see this so this is a verb this is a verb start tomando we just talk about uh, present progressive start tomando is a present progressive of the verb tomar ando here is the present participle and here is the auxiliary star okay so we have that recetan is another verb okay then consejo give advice then is another verb okay tomar is the infinitive form of tomar okay Okay, en un langage que los pacientes quienes los cuidan entienden. Two verbs here: cuidar, cuidan, entienden, entender, which is to understand. Okay, so, so two verbs here, and they are all uh, in the present tense. Okay, cuidar, they all end in. Uh, I mean, this one cuidar is uh, it ends with uh, in a. Uh, um ar and uh, intender and in er but in this context is uh used as a subjunctive that's why it has an ending uh, you have uh, this one uh, i say which is to do or when we were studying on uh, direct and indirect object uh, we talk about how uh, lay the pronoun lay could be added to the end of a, a verb here it's been it's added to the infinitive assay assay is to do so assay lay is uh, to do it okay so it's a verb um compati is a verb which is to share is a verb but it's an infinitive mode here for maintain here is a verb as well and uh controller para controller la pression controller is a verb Compati, I already say, is a verb, and then using is a verb. Using is a verb. Is a verb user, but used as an imperative form. So it uh, the ending shows that is an imperative, not a regular present tense. Okay. Incorpora, use here with a with a uh, a direct object attached to its end okay and uh ayuda is to help is the infinitive form and controller is to check okay check its blood his his or her blood pressure okay so controller is the a verb used at the infinitive form so that's the end of uh, this uh, in-class illustration and uh, i suggest that you do your homework before uh, ending this lesson so as when we when you are ready you come back to the next lesson 
if you defer completing the homework uh, it might take you longer now that we have just finished it is still fresh in your memory and we have just identified the verbs here uh, it will help you identify the verbs in the other part of the PDF okay again thank you very much for your attention uh, an introduction to uh, the study of verbs in about an hour is the shortest we can do because this can take 100 or 200 hours to to master verbs to master <laughs> spanish verbs so one hour survey uh, with uh, all the information that we have discussed is uh, uh, is the minimum you you should do when you are studying a verb so uh, i encourage you after uh, at the completion of this course after you have developed the necessary skills to be able to to perform vital sign and immerse yourself more and more into the language and later come back to your grammar books uh, in the reference i will recommend a book that's written directly in spanish that will help you all these things we are doing uh, the grammatical terminology that i keep mentioning and all these tests that we are going through you know directly in spanish instead of showing you or uh, isolated uh, fragments of tests as example to illustrate those grammatical points at the end of each lesson we come back to a test that is an authentic test authentic in the sense that it's not written for language learning it's written for the public or written for patient education so and then we are using it as material uh, so it's an authentic test with no modification uh, to the content and so it's not an adapted material it's also it's just the format that i have adapted but the test itself is the same as original and originally intended to people interested in public health and to patient education so using material like this uh, exposes you to the real uh, language workplace language illustration so keep working on your your spanish keep reading after we finish the course read listen to uh, programs that are in spanish and uh, your skill will be building little by little so Thank you for your attention and uh, see you in uh, the following lesson, okay?